The Jared Dillion Show. I'm Jared Dillion. This is The Jared Dillion Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is The Jared Dillion Show. No fun allowed. We are no longer allowed to have any fun. Everybody is miserable. When was the last time you were like in a restaurant or on the street or someplace and you saw somebody laughing? Like full on cracking up, just having a great time, crying, laughing so hard. When was the la- when was the last time you laughed that hard? Right? That there's there's no humor, there's no joy. Everybody, everybody is miserable. Everybody's angry. Got the election coming up, which adds to it. Mostly it's because of COVID. We're going to talk about that in a second. There is no fun allowed in the United States anymore. And the reason there's no fun allowed, it's because if you're having fun, it means you're not taking the virus seriously. If you see somebody having fun, it means that they don't care about the virus. They're just involved with themselves and they're selfish and you're supposed to be miserable and that's really what's going on. You know, it's absolutely true. There's no smiling. There's no laughing. We're all supposed to be miserable. But all the fun things we used to do, we can no longer do. Like, we can't travel. I used to travel all the time. I used to spend $30,000 a year traveling. And this year, I I did two trips in January and February, and that's it. I can't go to bars. You know, I I don't drink. um, But a bar is, you know, oftentimes a happy place. There's glasses clinking, and people are telling jokes, and people are laughing. It's a place for people to have fun. We can't go to nightclubs and listen to great music and, you know, dance. There's no dancing. There's no dancing. In California, they banned singing. There's no singing in California. Right? It's like Gavin Newsom is the Grinch. All the Who's down in Whoville. No singing in California. No dancing. No singing and dancing. No laughing. No bars. No baseball games. No football games. Everything fun has been banned. And, you know, the interesting thing is, I mean, this is all done in the name of the virus. But what I think we've done is I think we've created this association between, um, you know, compliance with the virus and fun. And if you see somebody having fun, it means they're not taking the virus seriously. I truly believe that. And everybody is serious as a heart attack all the time. Coronavirus has killed everything that is fun. I don't really want to get into the politics of this because... It's not a political show and the politics are a mess. But I will observe that one group of people is more predisposed to fun than another group of people. But from a social psychology standpoint, this this really is where we are. Now, I pay attention to this sort of thing. We're going to talk about this in some detail. And by the way, there is a connection to the stock market. There's a very strong connection to the stock market. There are investment implications on the lack of happiness. Because I remember points in time in history when people weren't happy. And I remember points in time in history when people were happy. And I remember where the stock market was. So this is really interesting stuff. But from a social psychology standpoint, it's true. If you're having fun, it must mean that you're not taking the virus seriously. When was the last time you saw somebody laughing in public? I can't think of it. I cannot think of a time. I can't think of a time that I saw somebody laughing anywhere. Nothing is funny anymore, which is kind of a larger statement on like comedy and, you know, political correctness and stuff like that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this as it pertains to the virus. Nothing is funny. No laughing. Now, a few months back, I had my nephew over to my house. And a lot of times when my nephew comes over, I show him old movies. And when I say old, I mean like the 80s and the 90s, not, you know, old movies. By the way, something crazy, if you think about this. So I showed him Real Genius, 
with Val Kilmer in 1984. This is 2020. That movie is 36 years old. So when I was a kid, you know, when I was like a kid in like 19... 19- 84, if you showed me a movie that was 36 years old, it was from 1948. That's how old these movies are. That's crazy. That's like me being a kid and watching a movie from 1948. So these are very old movies. Real Genius is amazing. It still it holds up over time. So we watched that movie. And my nephew, who is 22, he turns to me after the movie and he says, people were so happy back then. People were so happy. And that was like the most depressing thing I had ever heard. It hit me like a ton of bricks, but it's true. I mean, if you look in that movie, everybody's having a great time. Everybody's laughing like everybody was happy. That's If you watch movies today, that's not the case. It hit me like a ton of bricks. People are not happy nowadays. There's a quote from 1984. Everything other than working was forbidden. Walking in the streets, having fun, singing, dancing, getting together, everything was forbidden. So the stock market implications are as follows. Now, I wrote an essay about this in The Tenth Man, which is my free newsletter. I'm going to read you parts of it. It's pretty great stuff. I do not know the provenance of this, but it didn't come from me. Here are a list of five things you get to choose. Three, family, fitness, work, sleep, and fun. That is life. You want to do all of these things, but there are trade-offs, and you can't simultaneously have your cake and eat it too. You can only choose three. I choose work, sleep, and fun. I love to work, I love to sleep, and I love to have fun. For me, the fun part is music. At age 46, fitness is no longer a priority. I don't have any children, and my wife is a bit of a workaholic, too, so we don't do much in the way of family stuff. Most Wall Street guys choose family, fitness, and work. They don't sleep. They get up at 3 in the morning to work out in their basements. When they come home, they spend time with their kids. They don't have hobbies, and they're not out partying. There are 24 hours in a day, and the most important decision you will make in your life is how to spend those 24 hours. We make this decision on a daily basis, and I choose the same things over and over again, work, sleep, and fun. Except now, there is no more fun because of COVID-19. Everything that was fun has been banned, like nightclubs, which is about the worst possible business that you could have during a pandemic. Except the clubs are open again in Miami, good old DeSantis. Restaurants are fun, too, and in some parts of the country, they are barely open. We still have vestiges of a puritanical society. Americans like to deny themselves things that they enjoy as a matter of principle. It is a national pastime to see who can be the most miserable. In the great state of California, Governor Gavin Newsom recently banned singing. I get the concerns about disease transmission. Say it, don't spray it, but common sense is not prevailing here. One thing I have written about extensively in my newsletter is that COVID-19 is a Republican killer. In a crisis, you have to do something. It actually doesn't matter how ludicrous that something is. You just have to be seen doing something. The counter argument is that restrictions on activities and movement impinge on personal freedom, and there is a balance to be struck between disease transmission and liberty. But no Republican in a position of power has articulately made that case. As a consequence, the Republicans look like a bunch of yahoos that want to kill everybody. The optics are terrible. There is a perceived indifference to human suffering, although it has nothing to do with indifference. It is simply a matter of trade-offs, which those on the right understand better. Our response to COVID-19 has identified a relationship between disease prevention and fun. If you're having fun, it must mean that you're not taking the disease seriously, so fun is not allowed. There has been a significant decline in happiness worldwide. What does happiness mean in investing terms? In simple terms, when there is not a lot of it around, stocks are about to go up. I am thinking of the post-recession period in the early 1990s when George H.W. Bush-era pessimism was at its peak, the jobless recovery and all that. That period of time preceded one of the biggest stock market booms in history. And then at the peak of that stock market boom, the social mood was deliriously happy, and that was the peak of happiness in the stock market. 
if I am thinking about stocks strictly in terms of social mood and taking nothing else into account, I'd say that we are on the cusp of an enormous stock market rally because once we get past the election and once we get past the virus, which will happen, we will have an explosion of happiness. It's hard to see right now since we're in the midst of this collective depression, but it will happen and you will see a corresponding explosion in economic activity. All the concerns about debt and deficits and taxes aside, the stock market seems to like the idea that a hypothetical Biden administration will spend lots of money. Whatever money we think it will spend, we should probably double or triple it. It will be an orgy of spending and it will feel good. Remember, there is no better way to express a bearish bet on America than buying stocks. The worse America does, the higher stocks will go. I want to talk about this idea of happiness as it pertains to the stock market. Stocks are an indicator of social mood. When people are happy, stocks are high. When people are sad, stocks are low. There is a reason they called it the Great Depression. So one thing you can do is pay attention to when people are miserable and plan for a time when people are not so miserable when stocks are higher. The early 1990s, we were listening to grunge music, not very uplifting stuff. Nine Inch Nails was at the top of the charts. Nine Inch Nails, they sing about torture and death, top of the charts in 1994, and that was a sign that the stock market was about to go a lot higher. I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. Jared Dillion Show.